your goal should be a dream with a deadline. That's why I gave you five years. Five years. See, dreams don't come true. Dreams are made true. Five years. Your mountain is waiting. So, get on your way. Hey, Candace, what are you up to today? Well, I'll probably try to bust you guys again and fail again and add another link on my summer-long chain of disappointment and regrets. How about that, Ferb? Candace already knows what she's going to do today. Hello. This is Big Anklevich here. Welcome to another ankle cast. Um, tag team's back again. Uh... Yeah, I'm here with uh, with another episode for you. I it's it's gonna be, I guess, a little bit different than normal. Um, I meant to actually do this episode earlier, a while ago, shortly after I recorded the last ankle cast, because you know this thing came up and it made me feel and think something. And I wanted to respond to it and maybe pledge to, to, to do some things. But other things came up, and so I never did get it recorded. And so here I am at the regular time recording this together with my regular ankle cast. <clears throat> um, so this, this podcast for the last five or six months has been all about this five-year plan that I came up with to, uh, to basically it's a goal that I had to become a writer who makes a living as a writer within the next five years. I've been wanting to do that for a long time, but never uh, following through with it. And so I talked to Rich one time, and he said, start now, and five years from now is when you can do it. And so I decided, you know what, I'm going to do that. And I made some goals, which I need to revisit, because, uh, yeah, A, I'm not keeping up with them. Um, And B, I'm not even sure if they're the right goals, necessarily. After five months or six months working on this... I'm not so sure if that's what I need to be doing or not. So, um, so yeah, I, I really need to revisit the goals. Um, my goals were basically to publish, I think, two stories that I have already written each month. And uh, to uh, write a certain amount of words each month. And I think there was more, but I can't even think of what it was. That tells you how much I need to revisit those goals, I guess. Um, But yeah, last month was a really bad month. I probably wrote zero words last month. I'm not sure. But uh, I got to the point where I have been in the past where I was just trying to avoid writing. There were other things that I should do, and and I did actually write a lot of stuff. Um, I was trying to get myself to the position where I can just go with it. Um, I had let I, I do this blog that's just for like family members, kind of just talks about what me and my family have been up to, um, and you know, being a writer, I can't just do a a normal entry. Oh, yeah, we went to this, we did this, blah, blah, blah. Here's some pictures, go. Like my wife did when she actually... She was the one that started the blog because all her friends were doing blogs, and so apparently she needed to do one. She started it up, and she we went to Yellowstone, and her first post was, here's our our trip to Yellowstone, and she just posted a crap load of pictures, like 20 pictures she posted, and she just... You know, a, a couple of them, she had a little a little caption to go with it. Oh, this is this, and this is that. But otherwise, there were just pictures of us in Yellowstone. And then she didn't write another post for, like, six months. And then she wrote, you know, a, a shorty 
like and now it was Christmas time. She's like, hey, have Merry Christmas to everybody. We went to see Christmas lights and here's a picture. And then, um, and then again, yeah, I didn't post for, for months. And finally at Easter time, after almost a year of this blog being, uh, you know, a lot of nothing, I went out with the kids and we had an interesting time at a local Easter egg hunt. And I thought, you know what? I'm gonna write about this and I'm gonna post it to the blog and I'm gonna make this blog happen. And I took it over. And that was like five years ago. It was almost around the same time that the Dune Steep itself started. And I have been keeping this blog up for five straight years, but there are always times where things get busy and I fall behind. And this Christmas was one of those times where we went on our vacation to San Diego for a whole week. And so while we were gone, uh, I didn't write anything, but we did a lot of things. And these were all things that I needed to write about and put into the blog. And, you know, that catching up on all of that was a big chore. And then right after that came Christmas and right after that New Year's and right after that my daughter's birthday and right after that my son's birthday and right after that my other daughter's birthday and you know it, w it was all coming fast on each other and I wasn't keeping up and so I was like three months behind on this blog but I wasn't just going to give up on it and let it die after five years of keeping it going and so that's what I did last month I put my head down and plowed away and just pushed and uh, yeah I I managed to catch all the way up, all the posts, all the things that I wanted to put on there. And uh, along with doing a bunch of other stuff, there was a lot of work, yard work that had to be done. Spring is coming on here, and so my wife always gets a lot of plans in springtime. She wants to have a great garden and all this kind of stuff. About 10 years ago, she got into gardening and uh, Unfortunately, that means that I gotta be into gardening. I'm not really into gardening. I do like eating the food, um, at least some of it. I don't know, some of the crap she grows. I wonder why, because nobody eats it. It just grows and then we're like, oh look, eggplants, nice. They're so purple. And then they just sit there until they go moldy and we have to throw them out. And you wonder why did we ever bother? And we could have planted more snow peas. Um, but yeah, so uh, a lot of work goes into the springtime to get everything ready. And on top of that, we're doing a patio. We're doing a flagstone patio in our backyard. And we had to dig it out so that we'd have a base for it. And it said, and, and my wife was telling me it had to be deeper and deeper. And so it basically, I almost dug a friggin' pool in our backyard. It was so deep. Um, and that was stuff that I had to do in the last month. So a lot of my spare time was used up with that kind of stuff. And, and But uh, every time I did have actual spare time, I dedicated it to finishing that blog. And I finished that. And uh, then the next time I had some spare time, I figured I need to dedicate it to the Dune Steep. There's an episode of the Dune Steep. Uh, story coming up called Be Progressive. Be, be progressive. And I'm supposed to have this edited. Um, and I've been slacking. And so Rish is done with the, uh, the banter part of the thing. I got to get the story edited. And uh, so I've been working on that in my spare time. And now here we are. It's April already, which again, it blows my mind. I don't know if any of you people are like I am. What do you mean, you people? Uh, no, that, I, I say that in the... Any of you listeners... You, we'll just say you, any of you. I don't know if any of you are the same as me. But uh, now I can't even remember what I was going to say. <laughs> if any of you are like me, but shoot, you, you might be, you might not be. I don't, I don't know where I was going with that anymore. 
because I distracted myself so much that I lost the train of thought. What was I talking about? If only an answer man was here, he could remind me. Or Rish. I need to start carpooling to work so he can uh, join in my, my uh, ankle casts, I guess. Ah, shoot. Um, oh, okay, now I remember. I don't know if any of you people... Oh, not you people. Um, I don't know if you're like me, but it seems like the days fly past. You know how you, you see, like, on those movies where they, like, flip through the calendar and they, like, show the calendar page just blowing away to kind of demonstrate the passing of time? I mean, it's an old-school movie thing. Nobody does that anymore unless they're parodying old movies. But yeah, you know, the calendars, that's the way my life feels. Just the calendar page is just blowing away. Every now and then I will have to write a date on something and I go, holy crap, what? It's March 27th? It was March 1st yesterday. Um, and I, I get that feeling at least twice a month, probably more, where I just like, what? No way, March just started. It's April 2nd. So yeah, here we are. It's April 2nd. Even though March just started yesterday, it's April 2nd. Um, and so I, I, didn't, I missed everything in, in March. I, I didn't do any. I did watch some community episodes. I even stopped doing the exercise that I should because I was like, no, damn it, I'm going to write first thing in the morning but instead I got to bed late and was too tired to get up first thing in the morning so I did nothing first thing in the morning I didn't walk on the treadmill nor did I write I, instead I just slept um, which was completely the opposite of what I was supposed to do it was to do something and you know you can lose weight without exercising I've discovered um, when it comes to losing weight it's all about what you eat it's all about what you eat and how much you eat. And exercise doesn't really make that much of a difference. It can improve things a little. Um, but what I've found exercise is much more important for is keeping that weight off. You know, once you get there, you got to do the exercise to keep it off. Um, speaking of exercise, I'm pretty excited. I don't know why. Well, maybe it was April Fool's. I didn't think of that. Yesterday was April 1st. <laughs> My daughter out of the blue said she decided to go jogging with me. I suggested that maybe we ought to go jogging together. Because we used to do that on occasion. She was like my one kid who would, who would think that was cool. She would want to go exercising with me. Anytime that I asked if she wanted to come, she would go. Um, but then that went away, and she was just like, nah, I'd rather just lay here in my bed and watch a movie on my phone. And so, uh, you know, that, that was kind of a bummer that she stopped wanting to do that. And I kept suggesting to her that we should try it. And uh, she was not down with it. Uh, but all of a sudden yesterday, April Fool's Day, uh, she said she had decided that she wanted to do that with me. She wanted to go jogging with me and prepare to try and run a 5K with me. And then once we run the 5K, yeah, we'll see. Maybe she'd do more. Maybe she'd run a 10K or a half marathon, et cetera, et cetera. But for now, we're, she wanted to prepare. I hope it wasn't an April Fool's joke. <laughs> because I'm excited to do that. I haven't done a whole lot of running. I've mostly just been walking. But I'd like to get back into running, and having someone do it with me would be neat. Uh, I think my wife might be willing to do it with me, but we don't have similar schedules anymore. I never see my wife uh, at a time that we could go running. Um, if we were to go running together, it would be maybe once a week. Um, she does seem to want to go hiking together, uh, which is weird because usually she turns me down when I suggest that, but I think maybe she wants to save money. So when we do a kind of go out on a date, date night kind of thing, she wants to do things that are free as opposed to 
you know, go to a restaurant and spend a bunch of money and get fatter on their food, because restaurant food is always more fattening. They load it with extra fat to make it taste yummier. And so, um, it's usually extra bad for you. Um, so yeah, I'm excited that, that uh, my daughter decided to join me in this. So I'll have to tell you how it goes um, next month. The uh, first day of our jogging will be this Saturday. Early Saturday morning, we're going to get up and go jogging. Um, so we'll see how that goes. But yeah, so back to the rhythm at hand. Um, my five-year plan has slowed. <laughs> there was a guy at work who suggested that, you know, maybe I just, you know, it doesn't have to be consecutive, five consecutive years, just five years overall. Uh, that's kind of contrary to the point. Um, and I guess that'll come up in what I'm about to talk to. I, I don't know how many people that are listening have seen this. There's there's kind of like a writing blog community out there, and I don't mean like a, a blog writing community, but community of blogs that are about writing. You know, we, we, me and Rish will mention Dean Wesley Smith's blog a lot, um, and there are a lot of authors that have blogs like his, and I would say Dean Wesley Smith may be more well known for his blog about writing than he is for his actual writing. Um, because he does a lot of advice and those, those things that he's done are really popular. But, uh, but yeah, there's a lot of blogs that are out there that are kind of like that. There's, I think, one called The Passive Voice and uh, et cetera, et cetera. I mostly say that because I can't think of the names of any of the other ones. I usually just go to whatever people link to on Facebook. But there's a lot of blogs out there. We'll just put it that way. Um, and so anyways, on one of these blogs that are about writing, this guy put out a post and it kind of enraged a lot of people. It got a lot of smackdown uh, talked about it afterwards. And I think most of it was because the guy who wrote the post sounded like an incredible douche. Which you might expect uh, when you know the title of the, the blog post. The post of the title was, What I Can Say... Uh, I can't remember exactly what it is, but I'm just going to paraphrase. It was basically, what I can now say that I couldn't say before because I was a teacher in an MFA program. But now I'm not a teacher in an MFA program, I can talk about this stuff. Was basically what the post uh, was titled. I'm sure it was a little more succinct than that, or else the guy probably wouldn't have made it very well in an MFA program, because that's a little wordy for a headline. But anyways, um, yeah, that's what he, he talked about. And a lot of it was basically taking people that are hopeful to be writers and kicking them and pulling the rug out from under them, making them fall down and give up was, was what this kind of post seemed to be geared at. But not completely. I mean, when you look at what it had to say, it's similar to stuff that has been said before. Um, so one of the points that he said was that writers are born with talent. Now, may, I may surprise some of you by saying this, but I actually agree with that. Now, I don't agree that talent will get you everything that you need. Um, and I know that there is a kind of a theory out there, and we, I may have espoused this theory um, a time or two on the Doonstief when we've d done our various writing discussions there's a theory out there that uh, you can uh, you can overcome anything with practice and uh, focused practice I should say you, you know if you're a short guy you could still play in the NBA 
you're short, we'll say, if you're a short white guy, you could still play in the NBA if you practiced uh, properly, basically, I think is what the theory tells you. So if you're short, you know, you would have to learn techniques to, uh, you know, to overcome that particular weakness. If you don't have talent, well, you're going to have to practice and practice and practice to overcome your particular weaknesses. And, you know, in some cases, it may just be that you would have to practice 24 dang hours a day to overcome it. And so it's theoretically possible, but technically impossible. But writers are, I believe, born with talent. I think each person has a particular aptitude toward writing or lack of aptitude toward writing naturally and you know I, I believe that that's true but I don't believe that it's the be all end all you could have tons of talent and if you don't do the other stuff that you need to do you'll never make it talent will not make up for hard work you know, somebody like Michael Jordan, who had tons of talent, nevertheless worked hard as hell to become the world's greatest basketball player. He worked hard and he pushed himself endlessly to become that. And, um, you know, it wasn't just talent that got him there. It wasn't all talent. It was tons of hard work. And I think that that's, uh, that's really important. You know, you could be born with a lot of talent for writing, or you could be born with a little talent for writing, but people who have a lot of talent for writing that don't work hard may go much, you know, may not go nearly as far as people who had less talent but m worked much harder. And especially, I mean, uh, with a lot of things. I mean, basketball is the same kind of a thing, but writing is that, you know, you got to write. Writing takes a long time. You know, it does, you can't just crap it out, you know. It takes 15, 20, 30 minutes a day or, you know, an hour a day or many hours a day over many, many days to make a short story and then to make a novel and so forth. So, you know, it's a, there's a lot of hard work, so I agree with that. Um, uh, another thing that he said, which I guess is possibly true, uh, or maybe not, it sounds like it's a, it's a slap in the face to a guy like me. He says, if you didn't take time, or if you didn't decide to take writing seriously, by the time you were a teenager, you're probably not going to make it. Um, I think that's probably... A bit of a load of crap um, but also I kind of agree with it you know somebody who didn't care about any of the stuff that you kind of need to care about as a writer until you're he said you know if you don't start until you're 40 well you should just give up basically what he was saying which I think is uh, is untrue even somebody who didn't give a crap about it before you know you put enough time into it and you'll be good. Um, and so somebody like me who just turned 40 this year and is trying to take it seriously, you know, that seems like, oh, a kick in the balls. You should give up, uh, Big Anklevich, because you're too old. You'll never get there. Um, and, uh, you know, that's possible. I'm driving home right now, and a, a truck just drove right past me, a semi just drove right past me on, on uh, my left side, and, you know, there could be any time where the truck behind me doesn't break and it crushes my tiny little car into the car ahead of me and I'm dead. And if that happens, well, yeah, I was too late. I was too late to be a writer because I died unexpectedly young. But if I live till I'm 70 or 80, then I have a lot of time. I have twice. I mean, that means that this year is my half life year. I don't know what, <laughs> that's not really a, a thing, but that would be halfway to the end of my life if I live till I'm 80, which is common. There are lots of people that live to their 80. My dad will turn 80 in two years. 
and so you know it, it could easily happen to me as well although my grandpa died when he was 41 so that could easily happen to me as well let's hope I, I'm trending more towards my dad than my grandpa but um but anyways yeah so I think that's kind of true and kind of not people who want to be writers usually they didn't just suddenly happen upon it when they were 40 they didn't suddenly all, all of a sudden they read a book and said wow I like reading books I want to write one and then they they do it if somebody does try and do that their book's going to be crap um and it's too late for them but if somebody says hey I like r reading books I'm going to read one all the time and they read all the time for years five years and then they're like you know maybe I should try my hand at writing one of these books and they start maybe writing short stories and then you know work up from that you know it, it takes a little bit of knowledge of the language um, which I guess uh, factors into one of his later points um, and, and I'll get to that in a minute but first I want to finish my thought with this when it comes down to it I think I took writing seriously even as a teenager I took a creative writing class in high school uh, specifically because I liked to read and I liked coming up with ideas and I liked telling stories I became a film major in college because I liked telling stories I used to be uh, an artist of sorts I would sit and draw pictures in my room all the time when I was a teenager um, and it's interesting because my daughter has started getting into art recently too she draws pictures all the time and it made me wonder why didn't I stick with art why didn't I try harder at art why didn't I you know I didn't know what to do and so I just let it go but the more I think about it the more I realize I didn't try harder or I didn't go anywhere with art because when I did art it was all storytelling I would draw pictures of characters in stories that I had made up or I'd make up new G.I. Joe guys and do pictures of these characters and I would draw pictures of scenes that happened in a story idea that I had etc etc and so even art was all about storytelling when I was you know still just a teenager I did this and so yeah I mean I I think that I have taken art seriously or sorry <laughs> I've taken writing seriously storytelling seriously since I was a teenager um and yeah, I've been writing short stories for at least, you know, 15 years. Um, sometimes I wish that I hadn't been a film major and instead had gone to uh, creative writing courses. But then when I read crap like this from people who taught in creative writing courses, I realize that I'm probably better off. And I hear uh, Rish's story about his creative writing class that he took and just the incredible douchery of the teacher, I realized the people that teach creative writing tend to be douches. You know, they're the kind of people that just want to show you how much better they are than you. Which is funny, because that's another point that this guy makes that's coming up. Um, so I guess we'll get to that in a second. But the other one that I was gonna mention that he talked about is, uh, if you aren't a serious writer, or sorry, if you aren't a serious reader, don't expect anyone to read what you write. And that's totally true. I can agree with that 100%. If you don't read, and by reading, I don't necessarily mean looking at words on pages. I think audiobooks are just as valid a form of reading as reading. Hearing a story read aloud, um is just as good. I'm sure that there are blind people who are writers. I don't know one off the top of my head, but I bet everybody listening to the show does because they're all generally smarter than me. But um, yeah, I mean, a, a blind person who can't read words on a page can still write a story. Um, if you listen to a story, it's the same thing. And 
Uh, but either way, you've got to, you know, take that upon you. You've got to read a lot to be able to write well. Because you learn the lessons of how to write from the stuff that you read, or how not to write sometimes, from the stuff that you read. And so I think that's a total valid, completely valid point. Um, writing, or sorry, reading is 100% super important to writing. Um, some other points he's got in here, you don't need my help to get published, which is totally true. You don't need an MFA to get published. Especially these days, you can. Pu I, I am published. I published a short story uh, for people to buy if they want to. Unfortunately, nobody wants to, but you know, I'm published. Getting published is a super simple thing these days. Uh, Self-publishing is a completely valid thing, and many writers have proven it to be a worthwhile uh, option. And so, do you need an MFA? Well, you know or even a bachelor's in creative writing or writing. You know, I, I, it may not hurt, but it's not necessary for sure. Uh, you know, just as important as reading a lot, or maybe I think way more important, I should say, because it seems to me like going to college for writing, they try and make you want to write different things than you would have otherwise. I know that I found that in film. I went to film liking certain kinds of film. I went to study film with you know certain ideas. And in a way, they opened my eyes to a lot of other things, but also they stole the passion from me when they did that. I went to my screenwriting class uh, that I had with Rish, and I wrote the crappiest stuff about you know, really lame, normal, everyday kind of problems. Oh, this person doesn't feel like he's loved enough, and so he's sad. Um, you know, that was the freaking half hour, we were supposed to write a half hour uh, sitcom script, more or less. You know, a script for a half hour show. And I wrote this just terrible one about a guy who felt lonely and unloved and tried to kill himself. Whereas, at the same time, Rish wrote an unbelievably bloated script about a boy who finds an alien named Z-Boss and, uh, you know, his wound up being a movie, a feature-length script instead of a 22-page, half-hour show script. But he also won a script writing contest with that uh, thing. So, you know, he got paid for writing that story in the end. That screenplay, we'll call it. And mine, it was nothing that I loved. Rish wrote what he loved. And uh, he hadn't been, I guess, uh, indoctrinated by the people that want you to think that uh, independent film is better than mainstream film. Um, which is kind of the, the one of the things that I got. And I'm sure with the uh, you know, with a, a creative writing, they would you know, tell you oh, geez, you want to write what? Science fiction? Fantasy? Oh, you piece of crap. Just get out of this classroom right now. You are not welcome writing genre trash in my class. That's what I hear it's like in college for writing. So maybe it's not a big deal. And we definitely don't need that to get published. And getting published in genre is as valid or perhaps even more valid because people read way more of that than your standard uh, kind of stories. I would say the stuff, and I, I could be totally wrong, but the stuff that sells the most, mysteries, um, romances, you know, and science fiction, fantasy, maybe lawyer stories, I guess, because John Grisham probably sells enough of those just by himself. Um, 
But you know, those kind of things that are genre stories seem to me like what sells the best. And those other things where it's just like, here's a, a story about a small town where people have misadventures. I don't even have misadventures. They have uh, regular adventures in, in straight up fiction. Uh, what do they call it? Do they even call it that? And real fiction, whatever that section of the bookstore may be. Um, some other points that he makes in his thing, he says, uh, no one cares about your problems if you're a shitty writer. And this is, he was telling you to not write uh, memoirs, especially if you suck at writing. Because then people aren't going to give a crap. They're going to read it and be like, wow, this really sucks. Um, but I'm not going to write a memoir. So I don't give a, I, I guess I do the blog, but that blog is just for, you know, family. And family, you know, they're going to think stories about themselves are neat. But beyond that, most people won't. Um, he says it's not important that people think you're smart. Um, what they need to think is that you're, you know, they need to think that you're telling a good story. And uh, I totally agree with that. I don't want people to think I'm smart. That's not what I'm here for. But there are writers that are there for that. And the kind of people that would get into MFA programs might be the kind of people that would think that uh, writing is to make them seem smart. I don't know. Um, another thing he says is it's important to woodshed, which I don't know what the crap that uh, phrase comes from. I read the paragraph that went with it, and basically he was saying that he took the lessons that he learned in his MFA program and he applied them in his writing. And he did that for many years and nobody has ever seen any of this crap. And he did it for like seven years until finally he had something that was publishable. So I guess what he's saying is it's important to practice and I don't know, maybe throw your bad stuff in the woodshed. Um, but I totally agree that it's important to practice, that you need to write and write a lot. Um, which leads to the last thing that he said. And it wasn't the last thing on his list, but it was the most important thing to me. He says, if you complain about not having time to write, please do us both a favor and drop out. Now, in this case, he's talking about MFA students. You know, these people, if they're complaining that they don't have time to write, someone who is going to school specifically to get a degree in writing, well, then these people need to give up. But it also kind of goes with the whole writing thing. If I'm complaining that I don't have time to write, then how important is writing to me? Is it important? Is it really something that I want to do, or do I just like to say that I want to do? Is telling a story really something that matters to me um, or not. Is that what I want to do? Rish and I have talked about this a few times. I don't know if we've ever talked about it on air. Maybe we have, but we, we talked about how it would be nice to be one of those people who doesn't want to write. One of those people that doesn't have aspirations towards anything other than what they're already doing. To be completely satisfied with the job that they have and the life that they have. And when they get home from work, they just, they just hang out. Hang out with their family and they watch TV. And like my wife, she reads books like crazy, but she doesn't want to write one. She just likes to read stories. She doesn't have aspirations towards becoming a writer. She has aspirations towards moving up in the job that she's in. But she doesn't have aspirations toward 
doing something completely different in her spare time and turning it into a career. Now, a lot of times we've talked about that, how it would be nice to be able to just be at ease, I guess. You know, to have that feeling where you're just sitting there watching TV and you're not thinking, crap, I should be writing. I, I should use this time that I have to write instead of sitting here watching this television show. Um, and so... Yeah, that's just not the way that we are. We're not, I guess, wired that way. We're wired towards a particular thing. And someday, if we don't accomplish it, we're going to die completely unfulfilled. And I'm sure a lot of people die unfulfilled. Now, there's so many industries out there that are really, really competitive. It's like we've talked a lot of times about the film industry from our film classes. You know, we'd go to those classes, we'd walk in, and people are like, hey, welcome to uh, Film 101. Um, let me just tell you this. Uh, first thing right now, if you uh, can see yourself doing anything else, then go do that. Because film is really competitive, and most likely, you know, probably 99.9% .9 of you, which means most likely all of you in this class, will not make it. You're not going to make it in film. You're never going to get there. You're not going to have a career. Give up now and go do something like accounting. If you can see yourself doing that, do that instead. You'll be much happier. Um, there's lots of businesses that are like that. It's film, there's music, television. I, I used to go out with a girl uh, back when I was in college whose mother was one of those people who wanted to be a musician. She tried to be in a rock band, and her rock band went nowhere. And here she was with an adult child and completely unfulfilled and completely unhappy because she never was able to do what she wanted to do. And it was really kind of sad um, to think about that at the time. And uh, it was like the line in the show Community that I've been watching recently where he says, Tell me <laughs> what it is, where your life went so wrong that you wound up here so that I can make sure that I don't do it and wind up like you. And yet here I am, 40 years old, about the same age as her mom was. She was probably 45 at the time of uh, when I went out with her. And I am basically that guy. I am that person who wanted to do something and has never made it and is unfulfilled and unhappy. And um, it's tough to be that guy makes me sad um, to be sad lots of people I think are probably made sad by being sad <laughs> but uh, the good thing about being a writer is that there is no age limit on it nobody cares what you look like it's not like acting where, you know, you have to be young and beautiful if you want to get on movies. Unless you're one of those weird looking character actors, then you're, you know, then you're in better shape. But yeah, you, you got to be young and beautiful if you want to be an actor. Um, and if you're trying to get into acting and you're 40, well, shoot, man, you are way too late. You are not young nor probably beautiful anymore. You've got wrinkles and you're fat. Wait, maybe not everybody who's 40 is that way, but I am. Um, but the cool thing about writing is, you know, it doesn't matter. Nobody sees you. They only read what you write. It's not like music either, you know. You don't have to do a music video. 
The only time anybody sees you is if you put a picture of yourself on the back cover of your novel or whatever. And you could just do like Stephanie Meyer did and put a picture of you from a long time before when you weren't fat. And, uh, you know, that's, that's it. That's the only time anybody ever sees you and knows you for what you look like. You could be 70 or you could be 18. Either way, all that matters is how good your story is, how good your writing is, and how well you told it. Um, so I feel totally confident in the ability to still be able to make a living as a writer if I wanted to. Which I do want to, and so I feel confident in the ability to do it, even though I'm 40 years old. Now, the thing is, when I saw that, where it says, if you complain about not having time to write, do us both a favor and drop out. There have been times that I complain about not having time to write. Mostly, I complain that I don't have the motivation to write, which is a little different, but it's kind of the same. And when I saw that uh, particular bullet point in his... uh, rant about how people are stupid that want to write in MFA programs. Um, I saw that and I thought, you know what, that makes me feel ashamed. If I really want to be a writer, then these other things that caused me problems and get in my way I would find a way around them. I would do my best. And I started in with this idea somewhere in the middle of last month that I would stop getting up at 6.30 in the morning and walking on the treadmill. And instead, I would get up at 6.30 in the morning and write. And write my novel and so far I haven't actually done that, which sucks, but that is my new plan. I'm going to post this podcast tonight when I get home, and then tomorrow morning I'm going to get up at 6.30 a.m. and I'm going to go downstairs and I'm going to start writing. I'm going to start working on that novel, which I've written two chapters of. It's almost 10,000 words long already. Sunny and gray. I need to finish it before June or so, because that's when me and Rish were going to try and do a challenge of each of us writing a novel. And I don't want that to still be just out there floating around, not finished, if we're going to do that. Um, maybe that plan has blown out the window. I don't know if Rish is still down with that. I haven't seen him in swear it feels like a month. I don't know. Um, so we haven't talked about it recently. But I still am planning on trying to get ready for it by June, which means i got to really get going. Wow, check that out. It suddenly got nice and quiet in here. No, actually through the magic of radio, or podcast Um, yeah, I, I am now home. Um, I was, uh, in the middle of talking, and then my wife called, and so, um, yeah, I had to talk to her on the phone, and, uh, I made it all the way home before we were done talking, so, uh, I gotta finish the show here at home, I guess. Um, So yeah, let me see if I can remember what I was saying. I think I was talking about getting up in the morning and writing at 6.30 in the morning. Uh, It's now almost 10 o'clock, so if I want to get up at 6.30 in the morning, I should head to bed here pretty soon. Um, So I'm going to do that. But uh, but yeah, you know, I had a hard month this past month, and there was a lot of times where I just felt like I should give up. 
I wanted to be one of those people that didn't want other things. I wanted to be able to just give it up and relax. Um, and just, you know, enjoy life for what it has, for what I can get from it now. But the uh, funny thing is, I guess it comes back to storytelling. There's no stories about people who gave up. There's no... Nobody goes to, to see a story about somebody who gave up and now they're relaxed and they're feeling happier. Um, no matter how many times Adrian yelled at Rocky and told him to give up, he didn't give up. And, uh, you know, the bad news bears, they didn't give up. Luke Skywalker and his band of rebels didn't give up. Um, and so, you know, that's not the way to go. I may have had a bump in the road, but it's time to refocus and to get things going on again. I need to get myself into a pattern that works. I had one that was working, but then things got in the way and it doesn't work anymore. So I need to find something new. So first thing in the morning tomorrow, I'm going to be up and I'm going to be working on sunny and gray. Um... Hopefully someday y'all get to read that. I talk so much about it. I wonder how many times you guys get irritated when I bring it up. Just like, oh, come on. This sunny and gray that doesn't even exist, you big liar. It really does exist. Uh, heck, the first two chapters are on my blog. You could read them if you want to, if you haven't already. Um, and yeah, I'm going to get going on chapter three. Uh, Robin needs to go back to the Glade and, and see Sunny again and see how she's changed overnight. So yeah, I need to get back to it, because there's a lot to tell in that story yet. Uh, so I'm going to do that, and I'm going to get on it now tomorrow. And you know what I'm going to do? In the comments for this show, each day this month, I'm going to get on there and talk about what I did in the story. If I was planning on it, you know, getting the outline together, if I was writing, how many words I wrote, etc. And of course I will keep posting chapters as I finish them. I don't know how quick I'll finish any chapters, but uh, I will post those too. Because that was my plan with this story, was to post it as I go along. So you can read it and tell me what you think. Tell me if it's any good. Tell me if it's a book you'd like to read. Uh, <laughs> which is kind of funny since you'll have read it. So what you got from my speech about how you should never give up is that you should give up? Well, you did say give up a lot. I did say that, didn't I? Anyways, so that's my plan for this month. Um, we'll see how it goes. I'll be back again at the end of this month to report it. And yeah, I'm not going to be one of those guys that complains about how they don't have time to write. Writing is my priority. I'm going to do it. And it's going to be me. Pretty soon, my five years will be up, and I'll be like, Hey, everybody, guess what? I'm Begankovich, and I'm a writer. I make a living as a writer. Isn't that rad? I bet you think that's rad. I think it's rad. Okay, see you later. Thanks for talking with me. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. Your mountain's waiting. Get on your way. Congratulations. Today is your day. You're off to a great place. You're off and away. Your goal should be a dream with a deadline. That's why I gave you five years. You miss 100% of the shots you never take. Take the shot. There will always be things in the way you dream. You go out and you find why not. You surround yourself with why not. Live a why not life, man. There are a million no's, but all you need is 
is one yes. Where we are today is where we are. Today's the starting day. I know what we're going to do today. And will you succeed? Yes, you will indeed. 98 and 3 quarters percent guaranteed. Dreams don't come true. Dreams are made true. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Bye-bye, boy. Have fun storming the castle. Think it'll work? It would take a miracle. Bye-bye. Um, so tomorrow morning, uh-oh, I'm getting a phone call. We're going to have to edit this out. Hello? Hi, how's it going? 